I think I have to first, uh, first to mention my Yoruba name, that is Adoni Olorisha, and I'm nevertheless also Susanne Wenger. I myself am Adoni Olorisha and not Adoni Olasu. Born on the 3rd of July 1915 in Graz, Austria, Susan Wenger, later to be widely known as Adoni Olorisha, after studying poetry, began her painting career at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts. She later developed a reputation of being a noted painter, exhibiting with great artists like Paul Klee in countries like Switzerland and France. Susan Wenger's early life in Austria was a short one. Her life changed when she came to Nigeria with her husband, Uli Bear, who was the lead drummer at the Institute of African Studies in then University of Ife, and later became an expert of phonetics at the University College, Ibadan. Susan Wenger became so engrossed in the Nigerian traditional art, especially the Yoruba religion, that she stayed on in Oshobo, creating traditional sculpture that related to all the gods around Oshun and Oshobo. This came to be because when Susan Wenger first arrived, she did not accept the fact that a priest could have skillfully looked into the seed of time and tell what was to become. I, I, I lived in Europe as an artist, and uh, as such one has maybe more chances to uh, live what I used to call an archaic life than in other professions. I never uh, submitted to office uh, uh, duties. For me, art is ritual to life itself. It, it is so that the artist uh, uh, is having his ideas and his uh, uh, emotions, his impetus uh, from what nowadays is called the subconscious mind. And that is exactly the same is the case with the religions. So for me, since childhood, I had an attitude to life, a just quite normally participation into creation. And that is uh, uh, exactly what an artist does or should do. So my uh, involvement in the Yoruba religion came very soon, quite natural, and I, I was lucky enough that I didn't have to earn money and to tend for my expenses. I came out married and I, I got involved into the local a, a, a traditions, cultural traditions, which were much, much stronger then, a, a, quite naturally, quite naturally. It, a, a, it was for me no plan. I didn't come for research. Life as such is research for me since I'm born. Meanwhile, during her stay in Nigeria, Susan Wenger got herself addicted to the Yoruba culture. With this, she became the daughter of the soil, which gained her a chief tinted title, Ajagemo. Her close friends are the deep-rooted Yoruba people from whom she got her wisdom.
after settling in Agbolubode in Oshobo. Susan and Uli separated. Susan then focused her mind on painting and other kinds of art. This made her go deeper into the Yoruba culture. The Yoruba religion is immortal because it is truth. All over the world, the different so-called great religions are degenerating. People are not anymore uh, satisfied. They, uh, they believe in Mother Earth and nature as with the best people of all races. Uh, this intimacy with nature is growing. But uh, uh, as life is always problematic and uh, the human being also is born with the instinct that he wants to uh, know what is going on uh, with the uh, worried younger generations the introversion is quite naturally and people discover their own participation into life and nature and that is just what is going on in the Yoruba religion. As a priestess, Susan Wenger made sure that the Asheshe or the new sacred art got independent. Susan Wenger believed and insisted that the commitments required in the practice of such an art transcended mere encouragement. Armed with their faith and talent, the art would thrive in the face of the repelling force of modern religion. As a Yoruba traditional person, you go to the Babalao and they, uh, they what you call as a Christian or as a Muslim, I think I saw the angels is an other, uh, another a, a metaphysical approach to truth as such. All religions are the one or other aspect of truth. Because, you know, when all religions know that God has created the world, the Yoruba rather think God creates the world, so uh, Obatala is the the senior Orisha, the oldest and most worthy Orisha, he is the vehicle of creation beyond time. And the, 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 all the other Orisha have aspects which are attributes to it. And the, the, the central personage is Olodumari, but he has not as much human features as he may have for the Christian and the Muslim. It is a rather a new a feature of Yoruba religion that they address themselves personally to Olodumari, to God. It was before everything was possible only uh, to the remote sacredness to Olodu, Olodu Mari, through Eshu, through Ifa, who is the spokesman of creation. The most ancient shrine in Oshobo is dedicated to the water goddess Oshu. The shrine, which is still being used by worshippers of Oshu, is in the king's market at Oshobo. The Riverside Shrine and the Sacred Groves of Oshun are found at Osho Ogbo Road in Oshun State. Oshobo is a Yoruba town some 96 kilometers northeast of Ibadan and is the capital of Oshun State, created in August 1991. Based on the 1991 national census, Oshobo has a population of over 2 million people. The town, with an average rainfall of about 0.6 meters, lies mainly in the deciduous forest area and spreads towards grassland belt of Ikiru. Oh, <laughs> 
Oshobo is the contracted form of Osho Igbo, spirit of the forest. The goddess of the Oshun River is believed to have cried, Osho Igbo, Bobo Koko Aromi Niwati Foton, when a tree fell on a river and broke her pot of dye. The tree fell as a result of fire made at its root by Laroye and Timehi, the two founders of Oshobo. The town was founded by them in the late 18th century. They were hunters who finally settled in the lower terraces of the Oshun River after fleeing from drought. Originally, Timehi was an Oyo man and Laroye an Ijesha man. The groves as such are traditionally reserved for the religion, but while most towns have lost all or most of their sacred groves, the altars of the Yoruba religion are uh, uh, partly at home in the, uh, in the town's context and partly are their wilderness altars. And the Oshogbo groves of Oshogbo were, uh, as, a, as a whole, the wilderness altar of the, of the gods, which Yoruba call Urisa. And the, the hostess is the goddess Oshon, who luckily is individualized with this beautiful small river. It is physically small, but it is in identity a very mighty affair. Oshun, the mother of the river, is one of the vital creative deities in the Yoruba belief. She is indispensable in the creation of life. Yoruba myth has it that creation is incomplete if Oshun, being a woman, is left out. The gods cannot create without her. She is the goddess soul of the water of life. She physically manifests in those who drink her water and procreate. She is the mother of all life, whether human, animal or plant, in the physical and metaphysical sense, since she is a goddess. It is an established fact that anyone with any form of sickness or disease that drinks from the direct source of Oshun River has the prerogative of being totally healed. Why is Oshun Oshubu Festival celebrated? It is to commemorate and renew the pact between Oshun Goddess and Oba Larohi Badewolu, the first Ataoja of Oshubu, so that Oshubu town will always be protected and blessed if the people will continue to offer her sacrifice annually. Oshun, the second wife of Shongo, regulates conduct and is a factor of cohesion in the city. Hence the saying, Omotiyobu Oshobu, Awa Pele. Anyone who wants to live and prosper in Oshobu must be of a gentle, hardworking, and honest disposition. Oshun Oshobo Festival is therefore a cultural heritage of the genuine Oshobo sons and daughters. The town has established itself as a richly endowed cultural center of Nigeria through its annual crowd pulling Oshun Festival. Yeah, the uh, uh, last four years, and I can say uh, all the time since I'm in the Ashun Groves, and that is over 40 years, one can say that the participation uh, is growing and the happiness of the 
a people in the procession and involved in the rituals, a, the, the, the whole situation is getting happier and more and more normal without any complications. Susan Wenger insisted that refuge must be built for traditional gods who are currently targets of hot chase in the hands of Muslims and Christians alike. This determination motivated her personal and physical supervision of building a shrine. She used her artistic genius to turn the shrine to what it is today. The beautiful outcome of the shrine later spurred Aduni to convince the federal government to pronounce Ocean Grove a reserved land. This was made possible with the aid of her fellow traditionalists and the traditional rulers in Oshugu. Hence, Ocean Grove is today a notable tourist center to be reckoned with. Susan Wenger's philosophy places art and rituals together. She believes that it takes the sacrifice of kola nut and sugar cane to understand the ways of Oshun goddess. Aduni later artistically interpreted this as Oshun's way of preserving her privacy, which must not be surrounded by any feature of mosque, church, or prison walls, except the walls of the shrine which must be built with sand and not manufactured cement. Obatala priests know that a, uh, a, as Obatala is the father of the other Urusha in Mish, in one dimension of the transmission, a, uh, all the other Urusha shrines have to have a uh, Omitutu also, and Obatala himself he, uh, he, he accepts the kola nut and answers oracular when the kola nut is being wetted with omitutu. In Yoruba religion, Orisha is the name given to heroes and great men who are venerated and deified. Orisha is a common name for gods known and worshipped by different townships under different appellations. To the Yorubas, Orisha is a god that is highly worshipped and revered because he is regarded as an intermediary between Oloro, that is God, and man. Hence, Orisha is a co-worker with Oloro, that is God. This, however, resulted in the construction of many shrines and sculpture around the Oshun Grove in Oshobo. This shrine harbors gods.
Yamapo is one of the Yoruba Urisha. It is the, uh, one representation of the creativity of womanhood. And the, in, the, in the myth, Yamapo is, a, uh, is a, the potter woman. You know, the pot is a, a, a symbol also. It's not only a useful object, the pot as such is all over the archaic religions, also the, the womb, the women womb, the, 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 a place where life originates and grows into shape ready for life. But it is a life a, with, the, with the women's professions, it is fortunately so that they are a part of life, not only close to life, they are part of life. And pottery played a, not only symbolically and a, a ritually a very important part in the past of the culture of the Yoruba or all a, a cultures of the world. It was also a necessary object, just as the female womb is a necessary object also, not only the place of mystery of life. Yeah, I think the, the, the womb doesn't need much interpretation. It is the place where physical life originates. to uh, outsiders especially to use the name Shokpana. Okay. It is like if you call a very senior person your great great grandfather, if you call him Willy or Billy. Uh, Shokpana is a half taboo name, but it is Obaluaye and in uh, uh, as all the Yoruba religions which, uh, you know, all together built the conglomeration of the Yoruba faith. Uh, uh, so Obaluaya has fractions and sections, as the spiritual life of the human being has anyhow. That is Aladjogun Aladjiri. That is uh, more or less the spontaneous and useful aspect of Obaluaya. Yeah, there, there are the, uh, three young men represented. represented. You know, there is a, a, a Obaluaye, like all the Yoruba Urisha, has many fractions of worship. And uh, Aladjugu is well known. Uh, uh, Aladjiri is a bit less well known, but we have especially uh, to do with this a fraction of Obaluaye. 
and the, uh, 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 this statue is called Ladjugum Alajiri Ubaluaye because the young representations ha ha still are at the same time uh, Ubaluaye as such. Yeah, uh, uh, Ifa is mostly not represented, but there is in in uh, on this field of Abu Yamapu, there is the slender yes. young man, and that is Ella. Ella is a very sacred aspect of Ifa. Uh, uh, it is it is uh, so that uh, the oracle priest. Before he starts his festival, he uh, worships Odu. That is the word, the uh, word which answers oracular questions. That is Odu, and the, you know, the body of poems, which are the answers to the questions. And uh, then he will say, he will ask Ella to give way. Ella is the uh, impersonation, the individuation of the messages going up and down. It is, uh, this is why he, he, in our case, he holds the hands up, going up, like a mystical lift carrying the questions and needs of the human being upward into heaven, what is not the sky, but heaven. And uh, there, Ifa resides with Eshu as his helper and Osain, the second helper. Uh, the uh, Eshu is the mystical, the meta-intellectual traffic 